It was more than a chance meeting. When he parked the car, he saw the tree. Next to it was a young woman in her late twenties. Her fragile frame seemed to bleed into the brightness of the sky. Grabbing his coat, he started to walk. The air was crisp and clean. The temperature was comfortable. With a slight chill that made the sunlight above seem even more a blessing. As he approached, he could see that she had already laid out the blanket. On it was a lunch, prepared not for eating, but instead, a friendly gesture. How you doing? she asked. Fine. And yourself? I'm here. Her name was Rachel Hayes. The typical small-town girl with a natural beauty so mesmerizing that simply having her around rejuvenated the soul. To date her, know her, and be with her was as much a social push as it was an experience. He knew he had conquered this challenge, and it made him sad to know that mysteries such as she had been revealed to him. So what do you want to talk about? he asked his eyes scanning the horizon. Pondering his question, she swallowed deep, the nape of her slender neck moving like a wave on the ocean. I ran into somebody the other day, she replied. The way she said it made him know things had changed. A beautiful debutante like Rachel had all the suitors she could want. Still, the bonds of platonic love are harder to break than the seal of the flesh. He knew this and it made those who entered their lives reluctant to do so. So he settled, waiting to hear about the potential chance encounter that never happened. To spend time with her, he had to get used to it. They were so frequent, any other man would have left. Nonetheless, despite the maddening thought in their small town, he was given strength, knowing he was the victor. In essence, he had something even the banker could not possess. He had her. So who was it? Frank Matthews. Really? He's back in town? Yeah, we had lunch. Then he invited me back to his house. To know about the lunch and the visit was all part of it. A day spent with her was a constant battle of wits over temptation. Her confession was merely a reminder of what she could give and take away at her discretion. A deep-seated interest existed. So... What did you talk about? he asked, smiling. You, me, mainly me, and what I was doing. A million times he had questioned if there was an honesty left in the world. Frank was an old friend who, like himself, had been successful in the world. Still yet, friendship would not stop this compatriot from trying to cross a line that existed in the metaphysics of matrimony. Rachel was a prize that Frank's status could properly support. The surety of her knowing this embedded itself in his mind. Still yet, he knew how she worked. It gave her a reciprocal rush to talk about the seduction that almost occurred. The idea of intellect over the flesh was his reward. Silence befell them. She was thinking. Frank asked me to come back. Really? Well, that's good. Turning to him, she could sense that his nerves were being tested. One thing that she never enjoyed doing was giving him pain. But the demon that was her inheritance would not allow for any conscience beyond her own will. So, she continued, knowing her words were eating at the very being of his person. We're going to have lunch on Friday. I want you to come. The situation in which he was now placed had consequences. Mentally he cursed, first focusing his rage on Frank as a symbol of all men who don't know their place, and second on her for being too eager to test his prowess. Sure, no problem. What time are you meeting? I don't know yet. Frank's going to call. Huh. Well, let me know. Calls. He had gotten them before. Voices on the other line asking for her, wanting to speak with her, needing very much to get in touch with her. Interesting it was, to say the least, was when he informed each one that he, Jess Hayes, was her husband but he did so subtly. It was not his way to pounce on an opponent. Instead, he adopted cunning, usually allowing the caller to ease into the conversation before throwing a curveball at the could-be gentleman friend. It was then that the umpire would yell, Strike! 
and the crowd would cheer his personal victory, achieved by the maintenance of a wire. To change the subject, he interjected. Your mother called. Really? What did she want? She's leaving for Texas tomorrow. She's going to stop by on her way. She's bringing a gift or something. I can't remember. I... Are you angry? She asked, cutting him off. No, why? I can tell. It bothers you, doesn't it? What? Me? With Frank? Well, when you put it like that. You know what I mean. It bothers you. Repositioning himself, he moved in close and asked, Do you want it to? Without saying a word, she answered the question with a gesture. Instantly, he leaned back and absorbed the reply. Is that what you wanted to meet? Partly, she replied, looking away, but mainly because I want to remember something. Tilting his head forward, he looked at her, asking what? I want to remember what made me fall in love with you. Sitting up, he crawled to her. Like a lost child, he sought the familiarity of his special place beside her. You know, she continued, I remember walking into a room as a young girl and seeing you. Looking at him, she adjusted her eyes to focus on his. I got chills, simply from knowing you were near. And now? Jess, you mean so much to me. But I... Beginning to cry, she leaned over and placed her head against his shoulder. Lovingly, he pulled her in. Her skin was warm, radiating a massaging heat over his body. Holding her close in the moment, the embrace grew stronger more intense as each tear slipped from the vessel of anguish she had been allowing to ferment. Then, releasing him, she looked once again into his eyes. Nothing being said, she gravitated towards his face. Softly, she brushed her lips against his cheek, until finally he had worked her way to his lips. As time seemed to halt, he pulled her in ever closer until nature took its course. For what seemed to be hours, they simply caressed each other, causing two spirits to form into one all-encompassing entity of their love. As they watched the hue of the sky brazen into an amber tone, the graduating shades slowly pushed them both into relaxation. Without a doubt, both he and she felt complete. What are you thinking? she asked, whispering into his ear. About everything. Frank. The question, us. Are you sure you're not angry? No, I mean... A slight pause in his voice brought her thoughts to attention. I don't know. I was. But now it simply feels good to have you near. Taking his reply with the sincerity it contained, Rachel shoved her face deep into his side. Then, with a burst of energy, she sprang forth, causing her body to jerk in her excitement. What? What's wrong? I was thinking about your mother's visit. Chuckling, he relaxed and looked up at the sky, saying, Well, if that's all. No, silly, I was wondering where she would sleep. I mean, since the baby, we've not gotten the other room ready for anyone to. Cutting her off, he rode over to make eye contact. Face to face, he peered at her. Rachel, do you want to leave me? Numbingly, she stared at him. But without hesitating, she replied, No, no, I don't. With her words bringing the smile to his face, she followed his happiness with a slight wink from her left eye. Now back to my mother. Hey, Rachel. Yes. Thanks for making life that much more exciting. You're welcome, Jess. The End The Conversation by Brooks Kohler Published by Brooks Kohler in 2022 for the purpose of adding the story to the Internet Archive. Originally published in 2005 by Senior Views, a magazine based in Anna, Illinois. This story is fiction. Similarities to any person living or deceased are coincidence.